Matthew chapter 27 When the morning was come, 6 a.m., all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They already done it in the previous chapter. Now they got Jesus. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate the governor. Pontius Pilate is from 30, 26 to 36 AD. The Jewish people couldn't do nothing. They couldn't put anybody to death. Why? Because the Bible says not of a bone of him shall be broken. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, read that with John 3, repented himself. That sounds good, doesn't it? And brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. Judas confesses to a priest and he still dies and goes to hell. It says he repented himself. He repented. And he still died and went to hell. Tell us that there is a proper way of repentance to God. A proper way of repentance of changing your entire life. You just can't say I'm sorry and then walk away saved. Now watch what the devil says. Because it says, you know, he, Jesus represented him to Satan. I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. You mark that with the four times Pilate says, I find no fault in him. This is number five. The one that sold him out spoke to the priest and said, he's innocent. You would think the priest now, okay, let him go. The one that brought him to us has said that he's innocent. Let him go. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. What kind of courtroom was this? A monkey courtroom. They sought false witnesses. The one that brought, them, brought him to them declared he's innocent. And we don't care. He's still bound. And he's still going to the government. They want him dead. And he, Judas, cast down the pieces of silver in the temple. They're at the temple doing their services while they're going to condemn a man to death. Absolutely no charges. Absolutely innocent. And they're at the temple doing their duty. And departed and went and hanged himself. So there was no true repentance. Judas saw what he did and saw what was going to happen to Jesus. Oh man, I am so sorry that happened. There could, been, there could have been, if there was true repentance, there could have been things he could have done. But he didn't. What were they? I have no idea. He could have just gone to Jesus and say, listen, I'm sorry. And stood there at the, at the feet of Jesus and kept pleading all the way to... Jesus said something. He never went to Jesus. He went to the priest. And he paid them for his prayer, for his confession, threw the 30 pieces to, down to the ground. I've been in that mess. You go to confess to the priest and give him money. And you're still going to go to hell. He cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Suicide. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, It is not lawful for to put them into the treasury, because it is the price of blood. They paid it. That has got their fingerprints on it. Notice it says the price of blood. You know what that, you know what that implies? We're going to kill him no matter what. We are in no way going to let him go free. So Pilate, according to the scriptures, had to have Jesus crucified. 
Or these guys would have taken Jesus out back and stoned him some other way. But the scripture needed to be fulfilled. Christ died according to the scriptures. Not a bone of him was to be broken. You know what stoning does? And they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Works. We'll donate a piece of land that God will be so happy that they couldn't afford a burial ground. Wherefore, the feet, that field was called the field of blood unto this day. Remember Isaac? Remember what his name meant? Every time you call that boy, Sarah, we're going to remind you of you laughed at God. Every time you pass by that field, you're going to be remembered that you sold Jesus Christ out. And another man gave up his life and was hung on a tree. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet. Notice it says spoken. It does not say written down. People will have a trouble with verse 9 because they can't find it anywhere in Jeremiah. And they'll go run to Zechariah. It didn't say Zechariah. It said Jeremy. I think the Holy Spirit knew what Jeremiah said and what he wrote down and everything. I mean, you, you take this verse with a man. The Bible is written by a man. Well, here's a verse here that wasn't even written by a man, but quoted. How's that one? And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they, all, whom they, whom they of the children of Israel did value. And yes, Zechariah 11, 12, and 13. But Jeremiah also prophesied it and gave them for the parter's field as the Lord appointed me. So these guys who are killing Jesus Christ with envy fulfilled another prophecy. How's that? And they haven't yet, the law and the prophets have not yet come to the, this sounds familiar? Didn't we read this somewhere? They are so dead set against God, even God's words will not come into play when, when it's playing out in front of them. I mean, when I preach on the street, there are things that, hey, that's something that happened in the Bible. Wow, that's, you guys have proven the Bible to me by your conduct. Something goes, hey, somebody in the Bible went through something like that. They're not seeing that. And Jesus stood before the governor. And the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the capital K of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. And remember, he's standing before the Roman governor. A king would threaten the Roman government. Uh-oh, what do you want to do, buddy? He's not the king of the Jews now. But he is the king of the Jews. He is the king of the, the, the sit on David's throne, the son of David. But did David get the throne right away when he was anointed? Absolutely not. Who gave David a hard time? So guess who Pilate would be likened to in the Bible? Saul. He goes after Jesus. Who? Okay, I'll back off. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I did that. And he goes after David again. Oh, I'm so sorry. And he, I wonder if you find how many times Saul went after David. This is how many times. Something interesting. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. So Pilate says, Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? He says, thou say it. Then the priest, the chief priest, leave the temple and go before Pilate. Blah 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 blah. He blah 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 blah. And Jesus, he doesn't answer. They don't want an answer. You know, sometimes your best defense, keep your mouth shut. If you're innocent, you don't really have to say anything. Let them do the talk. They'll sink themselves. 
Then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things? How many things? Plural. Well, last night's chapter, they couldn't find anything wrong with him. They couldn't even find two liars that got together with it and find he's a uh, blasphemy. Oh, now, blah, 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 number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight. They're making up things before the governor as they're going along because the charge is blasphemy, chapter 26, verse 65. You know, we have heard his blasphemy. What think ye? They answered and said, he's guilty of death. Blasphemy. That's one charge. Don't you hear these things? They are witness against thee? Yeah, false witness. Then, uh, uh, and he answered him never to a word. Insomuch that the governor marveled great. You know what the governor's expecting? Well, well, you know, I'm uh, I'm Jewish. Uh, well, you know, I'm short. Uh, well, I'm of this family. Oh, oh, I come from this part. Oh, and Jesus just stood there, silence. <clears throat> now at the feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner, whom they would. I don't know where this custom came up, but. At this feast of the Passover, somebody would go home to their family or free. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Okay. He was notable. He was in the newspapers. He's at the post office. People knew who he was. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas? Now watch this. Or Jesus, which is called capital C Christ. Now look at that. You know he just said before all the Jews, Here's Barabbas, or do you want the Christ of God? <laughs> You're anointed. Now is that not God testifying against the Jews right there? That came from a Roman's lips. For he knew that for envy they who, the high priest, the elders, had delivered him. What charges does this pilot make out of this whole judgment scene? I make a charge. Envy. Jesus? No. The people that brought him to me. Now, isn't that remarkable? This judge puts a charge against not the prisoner, but the people that brought the charges. When he sat down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with this just man? Wait a minute. He's an innocent blood. He's a just man. For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Now this would be a proper time to listen to your wife. And she sent messengers to him. Say, honey, I, you know, I'm getting revelations here. That guy you have before you right now is just. He's only got two men in front of him. He's got Jesus and Barabbas. There's only one you could be talking about. Because one was a notable prisoner. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. They must have got word what Honey Pie said. Did you hear what his wife said? Stir up the people. We want Barabbas. We want Barabbas. We want Barabbas. Almost like the wife's words would have persuaded Jude uh, persuaded Pontius to okay. You never know. Maybe he did listen to his wife, but it, it upset the chief priests and the elders that we gotta get this multitude. Uh, you know, something's happening. Why would they react? You know, I'm a Barabbas. I was a notable prisoner with prisoner deeds among my family and every way that lived around me. I was not perfect. No one would say I, I was perfect. And I was bound to die. 
And if I stood before a court at any time before the judge of all the earth, he would say, you're guilty. And the governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain, Jesus or Barabbas, will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. So when you get somebody who's, going to, who's in prison, who's going to go to death row, who stands up and, with signs and pleading and protect that person who's going to die in the death chamber? The Roman Catholic Church every single time. They're still doing that. Barabbas, notable prisoner, is bound to be crucified by his deeds. And the people say, we want him free. Poor Barabbas. Do you know what his family is like? Do you know his background? But this Jesus, who's perfect, who's healed us, who's taken care of us, who loves us so much, get rid of that guy. You know, we'll have the homeless people, but get rid of that preacher. You know, they're saying 2016, get rid of the cops. They're so bad, but let's keep the criminals. Let's make it so there's no cops for, to get us criminals. That's what they're saying today. And Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ, number two? God is not letting them up. With, with, use, God is using Pilate. You ever, you, ever, you ever say anything and you just step back one moment, Wow, what did I say that for? You ever wonder Pilate's getting... I keep saying Christ. And I'm not cussing. They all said unto him, Let him be crucified. For what? Helping you guys? You know what the priests and the, and the scribes and the, and the elders are saying? We'll kick you out of that temple. You can't work here no more. You can't live here no more. If you go out there, that's exactly what Jews do to their families today if they trust Christ. You're dead. Remember the blind man in, in the Gospel of John? His, his family said, hey, you go ask him. You don't want to be kicked out. And the governor said, why? What evil hath he done, number one? What's the charges? So Pilate did not listen to 2713. He did not listen to the many things. Because what is the charge? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. No charges, no answer. When Pilate saw that he could prevail, nothing. But that rather a tumult, and that is a commotion, a riot, was made. He took water. And washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just number two man. That's what Honey Pie said, wasn't it? I mean, his wife. That's what his wife told him. See ye to it. Problem is, Pilate, water can't wash away your sins, can it? Numbers 33-39 is the, the blood of the red heifer. I believe that's... Water can't wash away your sins. Then answered all the people, this is the most stupidest thing ever to say. This is why the Roman Catholics are running around in Jerusalem today, maintaining the place. His blood it be upon us and our children. Acts 20:28 20, says that blood is God's blood. You take God's blood and you put it upon us. Go crucify him. And you think God, if he, like people say, he's all finished with the Jews. You figure that point right there, Jews will be all. No, he's, he's still going to give them a new heart. He's still going to save them as a nation. Jews still can get saved today by belief in Jesus Christ. God's long-suffering. But for that statement right there, the tribulation period, the great tribulation, he's going to kick their butt. 
You want your blood to be upon you? You wait to see what the Antichrist will do to you. He'll drink your blood. Then release he Barabbas unto them when he had scourged Jesus. That's beating. He's been beaten again. He was beaten in the middle of the night by the priest's men. Chapter 26. Now he's being beaten again for what? He delivered him, Jesus, to be crucified. He's whipped. And I don't mean whipped as in broken. I mean whipped as in the cat of nine tails. And it hasn't even been four hours yet. He hasn't recovered from the first time being whipped and punched in the face. Remind you that. And he probably still has a spit if he hasn't wiped that off yet. Probably still got the patches of his of his hair, of his beard being pulled. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. We're going to get a whole bunch of men. They stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. That's the movie, The Robe. Attention people, the Romans put a robe on Jesus. The scarlet robe. Let's get the Bible correct now. Let's leave Hollywood out. That scarlet robe was put on by the soldiers. And we'll see what they'll do with that robe. And when they had played it, that means braided. They made for the purpose. Sold together. A crown of thorns. They put it upon his head. Slammed it down upon his head. Those thorns going into his scalp. The blood dripping down his face has already been beaten by the soldiers of the priests. His beard has been pulled. He's been spit upon. Now these thorns come upon his head because Adam sinned and thorns and thistles will come from the ground. And you can do more perfect than Jesus with your religion or your works. You're a fool. They put a uh, they put upon his head and a reed in his right hand. A little plant that wilts. Why? And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, with a bent reed. The Bible says he's coming back with a rod of iron. Rod of iron. Bing. That scarlet robe, that the crown of thorns, that weak little plant, they are mocking Jesus. Your king? Yeah. I, we're your royal subjects, king. He's humiliated. And they spat upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. He's not being let up. His face is already crusted with blood from the first time they're punching him. And after they had mocked him, they took the robe for off from him. They took that robe off. That robe that Hollywood made, that was to mock Jesus. Hollywood made a movie to mock my Jesus. And how many Christians? You see it around? You know? And took the robe off him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to, to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, or Cyrene, however you want to say it, Simon by name. Him they compelled force to bear his cross. Now they're mocking Jesus again. Look, we found your royal subject, your highness. Let him carry your crown before you, your highness. Remember, Jesus is bleeding. He is marked. 
He's been abused. He's been spit upon. His spit is probably still on his face now. He's walking through the cities of Jerusalem. He can't even carry his own cross. Didn't he tell his disciple, carry your own cross? Hey, we found somebody to take it for you. They're mocking him. And your works and your religion is much better than Jesus. This is the same Jesus. Hey, put that sword up. I'll call 20 legions of angels if I wanted to. As he's walking, the holy blood of Acts 20, 28, that's God's blood, is dripping on the road, on the dirt, going to Calvary. He is hurting. He has been whipped twice within six hours. The Bible says that his back was made like furrows of a ground. And he's still walking. He's not crawling. And when they were come unto the place called Gagatha, that is to say, a place of, the, of a skull. What is the most deadly kind of picture do you see today? Picture of satanic and tattoos and bike gangs and, and on pirate ships? Skull. That place, they say, looked like a skull. They gave him vinegar to drink. Mingle with gall. That's bitter. Great. You know, they never ever gave Jesus anything proper to drink. He went to a woman. You give me some water. She never gave him water. She brought a whole bunch of people to him. Where are those people that he yelled? Where's the people that were blind that now can see? And they crucified him and parted his garments. You mean when they put Jesus on the cross, they made him naked. Ultimate shame. Hey, there's your king. There's everything. We talk about pornography and computers and magazines, which is true. That's a sin. Why don't we ever talk about what they did to Jesus? The naked body of Jesus upon a place called the skull. It was called a hill for all to see. Did Leviticus say something about you're not to see the nakedness? That's the Romans that did that. They parted my garments among them. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't. Fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted. And they. No, wait a minute. They parted my garments among them. And upon my vesture they cast lots. Here's a sock. Here's a girdle. I'll take that. Well, we got this robe. We, uh, what are we going to do with this robe? It's, we got to. It's an odd garment. We can't split among those. Everybody's got their lot. Well, I'll tell you what. Snake Eyes gets it. Seven gets it. The, the short drawer gets it. Whoever gets 21 gets it. We'll gamble for his garment. After they played poker for his robe. They, and sat down, they watched him there. Well, oh, right, isn't that great? Dude, and they're just mocking him sitting there. Come on, King, do something. And set up over his head his accusation. Accusation is a charge with a crime. Here is the crime that Pilate wrote. This is Jesus. The king of the Jews. That's the charge. 
I thought they said that he was he was a hypocrite, blasphemy, because he said he was equal with God. Why couldn't they bring that to Herod? Herod don't care if he says he's God. Herod believes in multiple gods. He believes in gods that are gods and gods that are men and men that are gods and gods that are men and gods make love with gods and gods make love with men and men make love with gods and the whole Roman mess of, of mythology. Pilate would never have cared that this man said he was a god. He would fit right into the Roman mythology. Oh, he's a god? Okay. We'll just add him to our knick-knack, patty whack, put him on the shelf. Then were there two thieves crucified with him. One on the right hand, the other on the left. So Jesus is in the middle. Now, how many thieves does it say were there? Because there are people out there who say, well, there was, there was all, the Bible said there was two. And one was on the left and one was on the right. No one else. It's full of this nonsense that people get into. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads. They walked by Jesus on the cross. <laughs> Look at you. Who do you think you are? <laughs> oh, you loser. I'm going to see you in a minute. I'm not, I'm not joking what they're saying. You failed. I'm not joking what, what I'm saying. We'll see you in a minute. Some God you are. And saying, Thou that destroyest the temple, 2661, and builds it in three days. They didn't say that to Pilate. That's what the liars said. The liars prophesied what they thought was a lie of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He's on the cross. He's about to die. And they remind Jesus on that cross. Remember you said you're going to destroy that temple. What's that the temple look like right now? It's destroyed. It's whipped. It's bleeding. In three days you're coming up, Lord. That's what they're saying. And they don't even know it. That probably gave Jesus a smile. Yeah, that's right. That's the victory, Father. That's the victory. Thank you, Father, for saying those men. I needed that. I needed that. Because that's hope. Three days, he's going to save himself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from that cross, and you would burn in hell today. If he came off that cross and, call, and called those angels down, you wouldn't ever even have a Mother Earth. Thank God he stayed on that cross. With all that pain and suffering, I hate to say it like that, but thank God he stayed on that cross. He didn't need to be there. I ought to be there. Ought to, where's Barabbas? Where's he, where's he in these pages? Where did he go? 17 years I left. A God that brought me out of the womb. I left Jesus. 17 years later before I came back to the place where I was supposed to die and met Jesus on the cross. And I don't see anywhere of Barabbas. I don't ever see Barabbas. Barabbas is one of those people that Jesus died for. And guess what? You never see him come to Jesus again. He'll die and go into hell. But, oh, there's hope. I think the Gospel of John. One of those thieves said, oh, fuck. oh Jesus, when you enter the kingdom, remember me. We'll get that to another God. That's a wonderful story where it seems hopeless and one man gets saved. I believe that's the Gospel of John. Likewise, also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders saying, this would be 27, 20, 27, 18. They see people coming up in him. This, this, let's go join in, boys. Come on, we, we of God assembled from Moses and Aaron, coming out of Egypt, the, 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 the priesthood that God is a staff. Let's go pick on them. He saved others. That's a great testimony, isn't it? 
You imagine, you imagine those words. The Bible says every idle word you shall say. You imagine these guys standing before Jesus Christ, the great white throne. He saved others, but I'm not going to save you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. He saved others. That's a true statement. Himself, he cannot save. And that's kind of true. Because he needed God the Father. If he was just Jesus, he couldn't do it. He could not, he could not save himself if he was a Jehovah Jesus. Because a Jehovah Jesus is not God. He couldn't do it if he was a Mormon Jesus because Jesus and, and Satan are brothers. And I hate to see what kind of father they had to produce those two children. But since I and the father are one. No, he himself cannot say, but he himself and God together could save him. And they got victory over the grave. Oh, victory. If he be the king of Israel, he is. Let him now come down. See the now? That's the problem. It's not meant now to come down. It's meant later to come down. Yes. Yeah. So, because it becomes down from the cross, then you know, gets, then prophecies won't come true. You know that Satan is whispering in his ears right now. You're a loser. You see those people you die. You see your priest down there. You know, have you ever had Satan do that to you? Just whisper in your ear when you're down. Yeah, remember what you used to be. Remember what you used to be. You're doing this for them. They're not all going to get saved, Jesus. Come, let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe him. No, it's a lie. And if he came down off the cross now, they would believe him in hell. Every man in hell believes God. James says, all the, all the uh, uh, tremble. He trusted in God. That's a great testimony. <laughs> Let him deliver him now. He's going to. He's going to. If he will have him. And what they're saying is God may not want Jesus. For he said, I am the son of God. Yes, he did. So like Satan talking to Eve, part of this is true. The thieves also which were crucified with him, cast the same in their teeth. Now Luke 23, 33 to 43. We get one of these thieves. Will, you know what? He's, he, he's going to do something beyond what Judas did. He's going to repent and he's going to get right with Jesus. Matthew don't record that. You know why? It's a possibility that these thieves could have been Jews themselves. And Matthew, I don't know. That, that, throw that in the garbage can. But Matthew... It's focused on Jesus, the King of the Jews. Now from the sixth hour, this is noon to 3 p.m. It hasn't even been 24 hours yet, and look what has happened to Jesus. You can't even sit me in a dentist chair for 20 minutes and tell me he's going to give me a needle for Novocaine without me going to a fit. It hasn't even been 24 hours. Look at the pain and suffering he's gone through. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over the land. It's about noon. There's supposed to be no darkness. It's supposed to be the heat of the day. Over the, all the land unto the ninth hour, 3 p.m. Three hours of darkness. And about the ninth hour, it's dark. No one can see anything unless they got torches. And torchlight ain't going to give you much. I don't think the moon was shining. Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. See, I know some Jewish. That is to say, all right. 
You ever hear somebody say, you guys speak Hebrew? You guys know your Hebrew and Greek? Well, here's something that God wants you to know in Hebrew. Eli, Eli, Lama Sethekinai, God wants you to know, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Eli means God, God. This was fulfilled in prophecy too. Psalms 22, 1, Psalms 88, 14. You know, something happened here that never, ever happened, ever. And you find this in the other Gospels. God separated himself from his son. This is the cup that Jesus, oh God, Father, if, we, if this moment can pass. But thy will be done. Jesus became sin. The sixth to the ninth hour. God said, turn off the light. Stop. The, 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 stop it. I can't even look at my son with the sin. Stop it all. And for three hours, then Jesus cries up the voice, God, darkness, three hours. And finally Jesus cries out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Father! Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, he said, man called for Elias. No, he didn't. He called upon God. You don't know your Hebrew people. <laughs> And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it upon a reed and gave it to drink. Psalm 69, 21, Mark 15, 36, John 19, 29. The rest said, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. It's not time for Elias to come. You rejected the Messiah. He's going to come in the tribulation period. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. He dies. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the mountains rent. Imagine those chief priests when they walked into the temple the next moment. Got the bread. Uh, 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 come here, guys. No, wait a minute, don't, uh, come, no, oh, wait, uh, you can't know what I see in there. What do you see? I see the Ark of the Covenant. Someone leave the door open? No, uh, the, the, someone moved the veil? No, it's ripped. It's, I can see in the whole, most holy place. I tried to bring the bread in there, and I can look in. Nobody but the high priest could have done that. And that happens at the moment Jesus dies. And the graves were open. And many bodies. Many but not all. Get that. Of the saints. When the saints go marching in. Which slept arose. Old Testament saints. Many of them came out of graves. And came out of graves after his resurrection. After the Sunday morning, up pops a bunch of Old Testament saints wearing little cards. Hello, my name is Samuel. Just in case you didn't know who I was. And went into the holy city, Jerusalem, and appeared unto many, not all. Well, they didn't appear to the disciples, did they? <laughs> They didn't appear to the two men on, in, on the road to Emmaus, did they? Well, they could appear to them because Jesus was kind of like invisible to them. Now, when the centurion, this is the Roman guy, they're pretty good guys. And they that were with him, remember they sat down and watched him? Saw the earthquake. And those things that were done, they feared greatly. Ooh, that's a beginning, isn't it? Saying, truly, this was, past tense, the Son of God. That's a good start. I wonder what happened to those guys. I wonder if they're going to be in heaven. 
You know, if they got saved after the resurrection, they would be just like me. Many women were there beholding afar off, which followed Jesus from Galilee. Oh, there were some women there. Look at that. Where are the men? Ministering unto him. They took care of his needs as he in his ministry. They, they fed him, gave him water, washed his clothes, among which was Mary Magdalene, the Mary, the mother of James and Joseph. That's Mary, his mother. Would you, I'm going to be, I'm going to try to be clean here, but would you like to see your son, 33 and a half years old, naked before all the public? For all to see? At a certain age, that becomes, you know, I don't see that no more, unless it's by accident. And the mother of Zebedee's children, that would be James and John. The mothers are there, but the prophets, are, I mean, the, the disciples are not. So when you go into most churches, who are the population of the most churches today? They're the women. Minus the men. And most of the men, where are they Sunday morning? They're out fishing. Peter, James, John, and Andrew. When the evening was come, 6 p.m. This is all timed. This is laid out on an hour. You could write down and take notes by the hour. There came a rich man of Aramea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple, undercover secretly. Don't want anybody upset now. But he's called a disciple of Jesus. That's what the Bible says. He went to Pilate. You know, the Bible says he had 70 of them. So he went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Begged. Begged. That Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. When Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. Remember, remember Lazarus? It's a, it's a grave clothing. And he laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewed out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. So he prepares Jesus, wraps it up, puts the body in, rolls the stone. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulcher. Now the next day, not Saturday. This would be Thursday. You don't get three days and three nights from Good Friday to Easter morning. So you throw that out. He was crucified on Wednesday night. The next day, Thursday. Now the next day, following the day of the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees came together on the pub. Sir, remember that deceiver. We remember that deceiver. What a thing to call Jesus. Said, you guys are the deceivers. You just brought an innocent man to be crucified. And you're calling that innocent man the deceiver? This is the one that Jesus said, you are your father, the devil. Liar. Murderer. John 8, 44. Get the cross reference. Got it? While he was yet alive... After three days, I will rise again. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. They got it more than the disciples got it? The disciples didn't even get this. These guys got it. And did they get right? Did they go back to the Old Testament and say, man, this sounds awfully familiar. Hey, buddy, check out Zechariah's book. Do you see this? Oh, Jehovah. That's exactly what we just did with Judah. Oh, Oh, look at that field of blood. That's where we, we need to get right with God. Oh, man, God. No, that's not how they did it. Read on. Commanded, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure unto the third day. Least his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. I want you to go put a lock on that tomb. I want you to put a, a armor guard around that tomb. So the disciples who don't have anything idea what's going on. They know nothing. So the disciples can't go steal that body. And people say, he's risen from the grave. And it says. I watch this. And say unto the people, he is risen from the dead. Who proclaimed that news? The angels. Now, wait a minute. We don't want them saying he's risen from the dead. Now, ready? Ready? 
Who said that in the book of Acts? The apostles are going out saying that Jesus risen from the dead, exactly what they didn't want to hear. And they took Peter and John, I think it was, and they called them off to prison. They even beat him. We don't want you to preach his name, Jesus. <laughs> they can't stop it. What the chief priest feared goes on in the book of Acts. First proclaimed by two angels. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, it shall be established. Last era shall be worse than the first. What's the what's the first era? We crucified this innocent guy. <laughs> they just acknowledge their sin without acknowledging their sin. <laughs> God is so great. Pilate said unto him, You have a watch. That means troops. That don't mean, you know, Timex or Mickey. Go your way. Now watch this. Uh, you know, Pilate, I really say I don't know about his soul. I've heard the stories. Make it as sure as you can, implying, you know what? I got a funny feeling third day. He's coming out no matter what you do. I don't, I'm not going to say nothing about Pilate. I can't. But I'm pretty sure Pilate is convinced. Somehow, some way, and I'm not going to say. Like but he tells... His wife's dreams? Yeah. Maybe she heard him preaching? And the fact is that he wanted the government office more than, and that made, wanting the government position may have damned his soul. But he's convinced. Go ahead, make it sure as you can. But you know what? I think he's coming out of that grave. <laughs> you know, the Romans believe in resurrections. Didn't, didn't Herod say, this is John the Baptist risen from the dead? So it's not nothing new to, to the Roman government. So they went. They went. We're going to do it. And made the sepulchre sure. Not very sure. Those angels, whatever they did, they found it flopped on the ground. Sitting there waiting for his people to come. Sealing the stone. That means they put a wax seal on it. Or maybe they got some caulking. Or maybe even far as caulking it. Maybe they put tar. I mean, they really sealed it. But I know probably one of the things, too, is they took the king's signet and sealed it by Pilate or by the high priest. This is sealed. You break this. You rip this thing under the penalty of law. You find it on your mattress. You're going to do hard knocks. And setting a watch. Now, you know what they did by setting a watch? Now they're they're going in another gospel. They're going to pay these guys a lot, but they set a witness to say, no one came and opened that seal. But two white, two two men dressed in white that were not humans. And when we took a look in there, things are trouble because there was nobody, and they paid them off. 